Hello, DrupalCon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Audra Martin Merrick. I'm the secretary on the Drupal Association Board of Directors, and I am super excited to be here. I believe that open source belongs in schools, so I am really, really pleased to introduce Stu Karoff, founder community school of excellent Asian penguins and Aspen Academy Penguin Corps, along with a group of stellar students uh, to talk more about this. So I'm going to welcome first our master of ceremonies, Joel Morris. Welcome to the stage. Over to you, Good Joel. Good morning and welcome to Open Source Belongs in School. Let's put it there. In the next 45 minutes, you will hear our ideas of how we made our school better with open source software and how you can too. Please join us in the Penguin Corps Pledge. What are we trying to do? Change the world. How do you change the world? Be crazy enough to think you can. Penguin Corps Agenda. Number one, leader, me, calls meeting to order. Number two, Stu Karoff, introduction and history. Number three, Michael, activities and impact. Number four, Sophie, diversity and inclusion. Number five, Cam, our response to COVID-19. Number six, Chase, why have an open source club? Number seven, Mohammed, how to do this. Eight, Q&A, please save questions for the end. Use the chat box and put a Q in front of your question. Now, please welcome Mr. Stu Carroll. Good morning. Hello, I'm Stu Karoff. Thank you for coming this morning. Sometimes people find it strange to find out that I'm not a coder or a sysadmin by trade. I'm a social studies teacher, and it's time for a history lesson. Last September, I got a new-to-country student in my class. This girl was working on learning a new culture, including learning English. I used Google Translate to convert some materials to Russian for her, and while that was great at school, it didn't really help her at home because her family didn't have a computer. Luckily, one of the first things I did when I started working at Aspen Academy was to start a club that taught kids how to use open source software to refurbish old computers. Those kids got to work on a machine for my young Russian friend, and we invited her mother to school to pick it up. Both mom and daughter had tears in their eyes when they found out the computer was theirs to keep, free of charge. We didn't know it at the time, but it was a process we would end up repeating dozens of times before the school year is over. Without open source, it would not have been possible. I'm a believer in the power of open source software to transform a school because I'm a witness to it each time I go to work. As you well know, most jobs today require some tech skills. So kids need to use tech at school to get them ready for their futures. Kids also need to have tech at home where it can help them and their families. But many families lack the means to get computers for their kids and no school anywhere has unlimited money to meet these needs. These are pretty daunting problems. But what if I told you that there is a solution that is doable scalable and affordable. What if I told you the digital divide can be closed? What if I told you that students, instead of being recipients of the problem, can help drive the solution? And what if I told you that the answer can fit in the palm of your hand? This is a flash drive. It holds Linux, the operating system that fuels what we do. And as for those questions I just asked, all of those things are true, as some great students and I have been innovating with open source for nine years here in Minnesota. It started at Community School of Excellence in St. Paul. It's also now taking place at Aspen Academy in Savage. Both of these schools have a Linux club. First, Community School of Excellence. It's a Hmong charter school, and its students are mostly Hmong and Karenni, 
with a high refugee population, high language needs, and high poverty. On the surface, that school is a lot like schools in many communities. You might not think it's a likely place for a technology revolution to happen, but a revolution is what we got. You see, CSE is home of the Asian Penguins, the school's computer club. The Asian Penguins were the first Linux club at a Minnesota school and the only one at a Hmong school anywhere in the world. And they were the start of a unique experiment. The ingredients of the experiment are pretty simple. Get open source software, get used computers, have kids do the work, and see what happens. The results of the experiment are in. This works. Having kids using open source software in school helps the kids, helps the school, and helps the community. How did it start? In 2011, Community School of Excellence launched a one-to-one -one laptop program, and we ran into a lot of programs that any school with a one-to-one -one program might have. Students breaking laptops, losing them, etc. To overcome the shortage in my classroom, I reached out to a great nonprofit called Free Geek Twin Cities, who gave me free desktop computers that ran Linux rather than Windows. They use Linux for their work because Linux is open source, free to get, free to use for any purpose, free to change, and free to give away. I was already a Linux user, so I thought that was pretty cool. Well, my students loved the computers. And a few kids started to come to my room after school to use them. From that, we started a club to learn about using Linux. The kids were all Asian. The mascot of Linux was a penguin. So we called it the Asian Penguins. But why should a school use Linux at all? Well, there are a few reasons other than the obvious one, that it's free. First, very few schools in the United States are using Linux. And I could follow that up and say elsewhere, too. If you want to stand out, don't do what everyone else is doing. Now, schools are usually more comfortable in following rather than leading. But having an open source at our school gave our students a unique experience they wouldn't get anywhere else. Another reason for using open source at school is that it's used elsewhere. Set-top boxes, cell phones, self-driving cars, internet-connected crockpots, the list goes on. If our kids are going into tech for a career, they will need to know something about open source. But the biggest reason is that using open source in school gave us an affordable way to have our students become technology leaders. Our school, our kids became what I call partners in the process. The kids were learning how to install the OS, configure the apps, run software updates, and change computer parts. And the computers they were working on would be used by other kids. The kids who took part in the program could say, this is something I did. In 2013, we began our biggest project, our school's digital divide. A lot of students didn't have computers in their homes. We took old computers, we made them run like new, and we gave them to families who needed them, free of charge. Two years later, we needed to replace the laptops at, for our middle school. The school didn't have any money for it. The solution? Crowdfunding. The Asian Penguins started a campaign we called Operation Upgrade. We raised enough money and got enough donated computers to fill two laptop carts. And yes, the kids did all the software work. In eight years, the Asian Penguins had over 250 kids come through the program, and we introduced hundreds more to Linux and open source software. In 2019, I changed schools and started working at Aspen Academy. Now, I had been telling people that any school could do this. So this was my opportunity to test that theory. When I started the Asian Penguins, we made things up as we went along because there was no template for us to follow. But at Aspen Academy, we did have a template, mine. I knew what a Linux club could be because I'd done it. Aspen's leadership 
had never heard of Linux. But when I described what a Linux club could do for the kids and for the school, they couldn't say yes fast enough. The big question was, will the kids be interested? I started doing the things I had done at my last school. I invited kids. I showed my enthusiasm and I let the kids try the software. When we started on that first Wednesday afternoon in September, we had 14 students who wanted to learn Linux. A club needs a name, right? We chose the Penguin Corps. I think the name communicates a sense of mission and the kids picked up on that right away. The Aspen kids started doing many of the things that I had taught kids at my last school. What are the different hardware components and what do they do? How to install the OS, how to configure the apps and so on. And just like the kids at Community School of Excellence, the Aspen kids loved it. They learned, they grew, they discovered, and they started making a difference. The way that both schools clubs made a difference is by following a simple formula. Get computers, have kids recycle computers, and give computers away. And it all started from a pretty simple idea. Get kids using open source software, and see what happens. Now it's time to let the kids tell the story. Thank you very much. Up first from the students is Michael Martin. Hi, I am Michael Martin. As you heard Joel say, we are trying to change the world. Well, what happens when you try? Sometimes you succeed. Let me tell you about it. In the Penguin Corps, we had weekly meetings on Wednesdays after school. At those meetings, we selected a leader to be the master of the ceremonies and get things going. We always started the same way. The leader asked us, what are we trying to do? We replied, change the world. Then the leader asked, how do you change the world? We replied, be crazy enough to think you can. That got things started on a positive note. And we were, ex we were excited about whatever we were doing that night. Lessons started for us with learning how to install software. This isn't just the apps, but also the operating system itself. And doing it in Linux is very different from doing it in Windows. Most of these computers we worked on were about to be sent to the recycler, but with Linux, we revived them. They are currently in the social studies classrooms at our school. Some of the lessons we used came from the FOSS desktop for kids curriculum from the Open Source Initiative. It has a lot of good ideas that really worked for us. Its author, Patrick Masson, wanted to see schools have a ready resource for doing this kinds of stuff. Most people today think installing software means simply clicking a button that says install. Well, that can be done in the Linux world too, but we found it a whole lot more fun to open up a terminal window and type the commands. In fact, all of the members of the Penguin Corps learned how to do this. We never made it a requirement because everyone wanted to do it anyway. I enjoyed it too. Most of the penguins were also in technology classes at school, where we learned about digital citizenship. When we came to club meetings, it was expected that we would operate under the same digital values we had been taught. In fact, we were expected to model it for other students. This included not hacking into other kids' machine accounts or using the machines for bad things. As I mentioned, we refurbished computers. We worked on old computers that either the school didn't want anymore or people gave to us. Some of these computers were given to families that didn't have a computer. Others were set up in classrooms that needed a few more. We've been able to provide full classroom sets of laptops for two middle school classrooms and pairs of desktop computers for four elementary classrooms. Lots of kids were helped that way. From there, we want to present at conferences just like this one and started a YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe to us. Perhaps a website is on the way. You know what they say about all work and no play, right? We end each season at the Penguin Corps by having a fun game night. We got to have fun installing and playing open source video games, and we ate a lot of snacks. What impact did we have? For starters, our social studies teachers didn't need to check out the computer carts because they have computers in their rooms. Again, those are computers nobody else wanted. From September until now, our Linux user base has grown from zero to over 300 students. Us kids are learning tech skills that we won't learn anywhere else, at least not yet. And let's not forget that many, that our students have a computer to use at home. Thank you for listening, or as we say in Russian, 
Благодарю за внимание. Coming up next is Sophie Svela. Good morning. I'm Sophie Svela. Now that you've seen the first few members of the team, you might be thinking, wow, boys can do tech too? Well, yes, they can. All of you are here because you have a connection to technology and computing. We all do. And there are things about tech that all of us get excited about. But if we're honest, we'll admit that the open source world is not as diverse as it could be. The history of tech is largely a story about men, with few of those being men of color. Nothing wrong with those guys. It's not it's that it's just not a very diverse picture. While this is true, it helps to remember that there were some women who were trailblazers in tech and were great examples and great heroes. How about Admiral Grace Hopper, one of the earliest computer programmers? There's also Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson, who helped put NASA who helped NASA put astronauts into space. You may have seen their history in the movie Hidden Figures. Role models may have been rare, but they did exist. That brings us to today, where 95% of techs in open source are male, and only 16% are members of minority groups. We have room to grow. When the Penguin Corps started at our school, Mr. Kiroff and the school leaders wanted to make sure the door was open to all middle school students. Could a middle school Linux club become a diverse place? The answer is yes. That question had already been answered by a club that came before us. That club is the Asian Penguins at Community School of Excellence in St. Paul, Minnesota. The Asian Penguins make a deliberate effort to attract students of diverse backgrounds and both boys and girls. As a result, it is multicultural and their team is 30 to 50% girls in any given year. The Penguin Corps is only in its first year, but we're heading in the right direction. By the end of the school year, we had a total of 24 members be a part of the team. Of those, we had students who are African-American, biracial, Indian, Kenyan, Somali, and white, with a total of five girls. That's about 20%. Room to grow? Yes, but a strong beginning. What attracted all of these students to Penguin Corps? We have fun with tech, and we all work together as a team. Boys and girls deliver computers to classrooms. Boys and girls learn to install Linux and open source apps. Boys and girls troubleshoot problems. We all help each other. Since the elementary kids have seen the example we set, we'll probably have more girls next year, especially since we will make a point of inviting them. We're already hearing from some girls that they want to join next year. Why? Because they saw girls do it this year. We are helped, of course, by the fact that with most mainstream Linux distros, the install process has gotten so easy even a boy can do it. <laughs> if a kid's club can be a diverse and welcoming place, why can't the rest of open source world? Let's all invite, welcome, recognize, respect, help, and have fun. Thank you very much. Now please welcome Cam Sachowski. Hi, I'm Cam Sotrowski, a member of the Penguin Corps. I think it was back in January when I first heard about coronavirus or COVID-19. At the time, it was making people sick in other countries, but I wasn't concerned because it wasn't where I lived, here in Minnesota. By March, that had changed a lot. Businesses were talking about what they needed to do to keep their stores clean and sanitary, and it raised the conversation. How would it affect schools? Fast forward to March 18th, when all the schools in Minnesota were converted to distance learning. That's where teachers provide lessons online, and kids went to school in their homes over the internet. It was a huge change. While it was tough going to school from my bedroom or dining room, at least I had a computer to use. But what about the kids at school who didn't have computers? Or the families who didn't have enough computers for all the kids in the house? What were they supposed to do? So... The people in charge of our school reached out to the Penguin Corps to create a solution. The first thing we needed to do was to survey parents so we knew which families needed a computer. We used the information we collected and got to work. We started by putting Linux on computers the school didn't want anymore so they could be given to families who needed them. Then we gave those away. More responses started to pour in. We realized that the supply we had would not even be close to enough. This became a serious problem that was in dire need of a bigger solution. Once we realized that, we started to ask for more. Mr. Karoff and the school reached out over social media and in the local newspaper, asking people to donate their old computers to us. We used open source software to make them usable again. A whole bunch of people and even some businesses responded. Laptops started to pour in. Most of them worked, but some needed minor repairs, such as 
new batteries, a charger, or a hard drive. All of the computers needed new software. Linux and open source apps were the solution. We got the computers up and running, tested them, and left them at the school to give away. The school continued to take referrals, and the people came to pick up laptops. Gene, the receptionist in the office, joined our team by walking parents through the software before they could leave with their laptop. Prior to the shutdown, the Penguin Corps gave away six computers. From March 16th to the first week of May, we gave away 60 computers. This effectively closed our school's digital divide. What did this cost? Since we chose to go with used computers instead of buying new ones, the only thing we had to pay for were batteries, chargers, and a couple of hard drives, and a computer. Total cost approximately $900, or an average of $12.33 per computer, including the computers we had left over and that were saving for fall. The program even gave us the opportunity to reach outside of our school. A pastor in North Minneapolis named Reverend Tim Christopher reached out to us for help. A single mother in Minneapolis with two children needed computers for her kids to do distance learning, but she had no way of getting a computer. Thanks to the Penguin Corps, both kids got a computer to use for school for free. COVID-19 presented all schools with a challenge, and Aspen Academy's Penguin Corps showed that open source software could be used to meet that challenge. Our biggest challenge became our biggest victory. Thank you for listening. I'm Cam Sadrowski. Coming up next is Chase Walgrave. Hello, my name is Chase Walgrave, and I am glad you came. If you ask my little sister, apparently I have the ability into talking people into things, like convincing my parents to let me do things she can't. Of course, to get permission to do all this open source stuff means that at sorry, open source stuff at school means that we have to convince our school leaders that it is it, that it is a good idea. This means that sometimes we have to persuade people. Today, I want to summon my powers of persuasion. You have heard my team talk about how, using open source, we have been able to do some exciting things at our school. The only thing you haven't heard is why do it. I would like to give you some reasons why you should start a Linux club at your school or at a school near you. Something you might ask, why does my school need something like that? Or even say, that's not the kind of thing for me. I am here to say that any school can do this, and your school might just be waiting for you to be the leader. Let's talk about some reasons. First, Linux is free. That can be a big deal at any school. Linux runs great on old computers. We use it to bring old computers back to life. This not only saves money, but it reduces e-waste. And last time I checked, this country produces too much e-waste. Kids learn. In a Linux club, we we learn how to do all this Linux stuff. We learn how to install, fix computers, update and upgrade computers, and all sorts of other skills. These are in-demand skills, according to the 2018 Open Source Job Report from Linux Foundation. 83% of hiring managers said that open source talent was important to them. 87% of them said it was hard to find qualified help. Many of you have seen this in action. It could work out well for us kids, too. This is a cheap program to have. All software is free. If you are using old computers... You don't have to pay a lot for them. Some something else to keep in mind: people like to get like to help kids. When they hear that you're running a club that has kids recycling computers, they will give you computers. Remember what Cam talked about? When you fundraise for a club like this, this people like to give money to support it. Programs like this have proven track record of being able to bring in donations. You help people. If your school doesn't need computers, lots of schools and family schools families probably do. This is cer- this was certainly the case for us. And remember, when you give an old computer to a kid, you're helping the family too. But Linux computers can also help your school. The Penguin Corps refurbished enough laptops to supply two of our classrooms. These computers were bound for the recycler and nobody else wanted them. These were used almost every day. Another plus is because two of our teachers now have their own laptops, they don't need to check out our school's computer card, leaving them from, uh, for other teachers to use. We also provided desktop computers to classrooms in our elementary school. That helped them out, too. Everybody benefits. It's fun. That should be enough of a reason for anybody. And there were even times where we got to skip class to do this Linux stuff. 
As you can see, there are lots of reasons why a school should start an open source club. It is affordable, kids learn, they have fun, and it makes a difference. What you do this with this knowledge is up to you, but my hope is you join us in changing the world. Coming up next, Muhammad Jamal. Thank you for listening and have a nice day. Hello, I'm Muhammad Jamal. Open source at our school is a new thing, but already it's attached a lot of attention from our school leaders and families, and even outside of our school. Unfortunately, for most of these people, that's where it ends. Their reaction is, what happens at your school is great, but has nothing to do with me. Well, I'm here to tell you that such statements weren't true when we started in September, and they are not true now. Aspen Academy did something special by starting a Linux club, but this is something that any school can do. This includes schools near you. Others are already starting to use Linux at school. The question is not, why does Aspen Academy use Linux? The question is, how can you get involved where you are? We have came up with a few ideas to help people get started with open source work they are, a school, a community center, a library, a church, a mosque, whatever. If Chase did his job at persuading you, here are some things you need to get started. A supervisor. It's not necessary to be an expert. You're, you just have to be willing to learn something new. Mr. Karoff is a prime example. When he started the Penguin Corps, he was a social studies teacher. He didn't even have a tech job. Other people have started the same way. The go-ahead from the administrators. Each school has a different way of doing activities. How does your school do it? Is it after school? Does your school charge a fee to students? Find out how it works there and put it into your plan. More likely than not, if that school has clubs, they're looking for more ideas for clubs and more adults to run them. Make yourself available. Computers. If you're going to have a kids open source club, you'll need to have computers to, for kids to use. They don't have to be new ones. Software. Your computers will need an operating system and apps. If you're using Linux, then you're getting software for free. That helps. Kids. Kids op using open source is the whole point of having a Linux club. Having the kids learning new stuff keeps it fun. Space and time. A club will need a place to meet and to keep its stuff. And the club activities will have to fit in the schedule. For both things, a good thing to keep in mind is to work with your administrators and be flexible. Now how to start. Well, here's how. The first tip is to start small. Use Linux yourself. I bet lots of you already do. A resource. You can use a resource you can use is the Linux Club Guide, written by our own Mr. Karoff. The guide gives a lot of helpful suggestions about how to get a Linux club started and makes it fun. It's available online at www.linuxclubguide.com. Recruit kids. Kids love tech and will be excited about doing something new with computers. We have seen it happen. Get computers. This is easier than you think. Remember, they don't have to be new ones. Many people and even some businesses will want to give you computers for your club. The school might have some they don't need anymore. There are plenty of places to get computers cheaply. States often sell computers they don't need anymore. And they are thrift stores, free geek, tech dump, and eBay. Linux clubs have gotten computers from all of these sources, and so can you. Do software and hardware lessons. Use stuff from a curriculum tips you see online, or keep simply make something up. There's nothing wrong with learning right alongside your kids. Remember, if you really screw up and the computer doesn't work anymore, just grab the uh, the install drive and start all over. With free software, you're free to do that as often as you want. Our biggest project became our school digital divide and we closed it. Maybe that is what your school, local school needs. 
The formula is simple. Get computers, have kids recycle computers, and give computers away. It works. This isn't about just having fun. This is about making a difference. Do you want to make a difference? Do you want to change the world? Start being crazy enough to think you can. Thank you very much. And I say in Somali, well, I'll set the high. And now we're here for the Q and A. And guys, you guys can come back here too. Uh, Stu, that was wonderful. I want to thank you and all of your students for just the incredible presentation that you've just put on. I think you have taken the title of the best presentation that we've had here at DrupalCon. Um, the chat on Twitter, in the Drupal Slack, and in the stage chat has just been overwhelming. Um, it's really incredible. I have captured a few questions that came through the chat earlier in the day that I'll pass along to you shortly. Oh, um, and I want to continue to encourage anybody um, in the uh, chat to add additional questions as well. I'll do my best to keep up since everybody is just so excited. I guess um, a, lot of, a lot of questions are coming in. So uh, so uh, Tim's going to relay those to us, okay? okay. First question. Um, this question yeah. is from uh, Muma Sinkala who asks, how can we replicate what you did for a school in South Africa or Southern Africa? And would you be able or willing to connect and help um, folks figure out how to get that started? Um, again, the, 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 the first, the, the question was from a, a person in Southern Africa, how can they rep replicate our program where they are? Okay. Uh, the first thing I would want to suggest is start small, you know, try it out yourself, get a hold of, of some, uh, some used computers um, especially ones that people have demonstrated they don't want anymore. Remember businesses, even businesses in other parts of the world tend to be on a regular upgrade cycle. Um, there are international organizations that often will ship refurbished computers overseas. So you may want to connect with one of those, but if you're looking for some advice on, on where to start, um, start off with, uh, with the Linux club guide. I made it free for a reason. So anybody can use it and that's at www.linuxclubguide.com. And if you want to reach out to me and ask me questions, I just put my contact information up on the screen. And so you can reach me at stewdoeslinux at gmail.com. And you can also connect with me on Twitter. And my Twitter handle is at stewdoeslinux. And if you want to see the kids in action, go to our YouTube channel. The, the link is there for that, too. Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, earlier in your presentation, as soon as you mentioned you had a YouTube channel, I put a challenge in the chat for our audience to double your subscriber count. So I hope everybody's jumping in and getting subscribed. OK, I know you guys can't hear this because I'm the one wearing the headphones. He put out a challenge to everybody watching to double our subscriber count on the YouTube channel. So we'll see if that happens. I right. episode 200. Yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. We'll see how many we can get in there. All right. Um, so you sort of answered this next question a little bit as well, which was about duplicating this in, um, someone asked, Allison asks, would love to duplicate this in my kid's school. Is there a playbook? So linuxclubguide.com does seem to be the primary resource for doing that. Mm -hmm. The, the follow-up question, though, from Alberto Rojas was, um, how can we help uh, enhance the playbook or spread the word? What is the best way to help spread your mission uh, among our own communities where we are? Well, one recommendation I would make is, is, you know, just feel free to learn alongside your kids. They're, you know, as they're learning, you're going to be learning too. And as you see some kids get involved, and this is inevitable, we saw this here, when some kids get involved, they invite their friends and then other kids get involved. Uh, so once, you know, once the, it starts to take off, it will grow. Um, that's happened everywhere I've been. Fantastic. That's wonderful. Um, let's see. Oh, but but I wanted the follow up, I guess, you know, they said, how can they can, you know, if people yeah, are looking at, yeah, if people are looking at the Linux club guide. Now that's, it has one author, but, I, I've already, you know, I've taken suggestions from other people on how to improve it. If there are things that people wish to add, please email me those details. I mean, we're not, this, 
this was written more for teachers rather than techies. So that's why you're not going to find it on GitHub because teachers don't go to GitHub. Okay. They just don't. <laughs> um, but if, but if people have ideas on how to improve this or add it or things that I just didn't think of, email me, you know, I, I will work that in and I'll make sure you get credit for it. You know, fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'd like to also just pass on some feedback from the chat just so that you all okay. hear it. Uh, while we from the see, chat. If, see if any other final questions in. First of all, best session, best presentation of the conference. Um, mm -hmm. Wow, amazing, most inspiring talk. Um, and also, uh, these kids should run the world. <laughs> okay, yeah, I want to re relay some of that. Best session, this is the feedback they're getting. Best session, best session at the conference. Wow, amazing. And then somebody said that you kids should be running the world. Yeah. <laughs> Be the president. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I vote Absolutely. for you. Yeah. Uh, I, I would vote for him in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, the um, the other let's see the other little point of feedback. Sorry, the chat scroll has been going so quickly. Um, yes, the, the chat other point of feedback really quickly. Yeah. The the Drupal camps and Drupal local Drupal associations. So those are our local Drupal groups in other countries yes. around the world. Uh huh. Um, are talking about ways that they can encourage any of the people who do business in Drupal to make it their standard process to donate those their computers when they're doing their in-office upgrades. So it looks like there may be some initiative being organized around that. That would be great. And if the and if uh, Twin Cities Drupal uh, wants uh, its members to send computers our way, we would really like that because we've been told. I'm just going to put this out to anybody who's watching right now. Um, our enrollment at our school is going up by over 100 students over what we had last year. Um, the governor of our state is announcing on July 27th as to whether or not we're even coming back. It's a little weird that I actually have students in the building because we did distance learning for like close to three months. Um, we don't know if we're going to be coming back or if they're going to be here half time and doing hybrid learning, whether they're home part of the time or what. The only thing we know for sure of is, is that given the increase in our enrollment, we're going to need more computers. So if they're, you know, Obviously, if, if you're, you know, if you're in Southeast Asia, there's a kid in Southeast Asia that needs your machine. Give it to that kid. But if you're in Minnesota uh, or in the upper Midwest and your company is going through an upgrade cycle and you're looking for a place for your computers, particularly laptops to go, we would love to have them. OK, and there are there are other people out there who want to work with kids who could use your machines too, where you are. OK, fantastic. Well, I'd like to close up with just two more uh, two questions. Yeah. Yeah. Two more asks He's and two more questions. Question. Yeah. Yeah. So first, first question, actually, sort of final question is: Is there any final message that you would like to give to the DrupalCon attendees about the program, about the importance of open source, um, or just something that's important to the kids that you'd like everyone to take home with them? Could you um, could you repeat the question? Sorry. Sorry. The question was: Is there any kind of final message that you would like to relay from the kids or yourself about the program or about open source um, that you just like everyone to take home with them after the event? Okay. Is there a final message that that you kids want to relay to the people at home about the program, about open source? Just something that you want the, the people watching to know. Um, um, I think I would like to ask everybody. Subscribe to me on YouTube. I only have three subscribers. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I would want to ask everybody to help us in changing the world. If, I mean, if you can't donate computers to us, that's fine. I mean, I think if I think you should put it towards a club. Honestly, I think as long as we can help the world, that's good. All right. Thanks, Chase. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, to close us out and wrap up okay. this session, I would like to ask Stu if you could have all of the students maybe uh, maybe end your screen share and have yourself and the students take a bow from the camera for us. Okay. And, um, I assure you, you're getting standing ovation from everybody around the world. Okay. So I've been asked to end my screen share. And now I'm standing up. Guys, everybody in so we can see you. Let's all take a bow. All right. On the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Wow. All right. That and was thank wonderful. you very thanks very much for having us. Yes. Now, have a great rest of your conference. Um, everyone out there, you saw the contact information. We'll, um, if we can, I'll connect with Stu about getting the slides to post to, to the Drupal.org session, and we'll get that all taken care of. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much.